Hey, welcome to your uh, algebra practice test. I hope you've been doing a lot of revision for this. This is based on chapter one of the Hayes publication for year nine uh, maths in the Australian National Curriculum. So let's get underway. Do you know how to do a video test? Well, you pause the presentation and we've got it paused right here or on uh, question one and uh, you have a go and then move on and do the question two and so on right through to the end and then I want you to uh, check your work and you're writing it on your in your own book there and then uh, I'll continue rolling the presentation and go back to the beginning and watch me uh, go through each of the problems so you can understand how we get the answers and also the marks allocated so are you ready well, let's go now so uh, I want you to uh, try this first question two parts for four marks and pause it and uh, then go on. I'm going to go on now. Here's question two. Okay, so pause it. Have a go. I'll show you question three. Question three, part A and B. I can fit them on there. So have a go at those two. Question four. And question five. Go to question six. There are eight questions here. Question seven. And question eight. Okay, I want you to pause the presentation now and check your work because I'm going to uh, continue on and uh, go back to the beginning and we're going to mark it together. Okay, here we go. Back to the beginning. And let's go up here. Now, name. I better put my name on here. Howdy. The total marks for this test are 46. Okay, so uh, are we ready? Let's have a look now. Uh, simplify the following. Let's pick out the terms that are like each other. 2p plus 5p would be, oops, 7p. I nearly made a mistake on the first question there, mate. 7p. And now the q's, neg 3q plus 6q would be positive 3q. Let's just check that on the number line now. So if we went neg 3q be down there somewhere, and then plus 6q, would end up, if that's zero, this should be positive 3q. Remember, negative in math means opposite direction. It's fairly easy under, easily understood there. Okay, let's look at part B. We've got an xy squared term. Oh, there's another one. And that's 2 take 3, which would be neg 1xy squared. And you could leave out the 1. We quite often do that. And then the other ones are x squared's y's. The square is on the x, not on the y. So they're different, aren't they? So you've got three take two, three dogs take two dogs is one dog. So this is one, we'll leave the one out, x squared y. Okay, so let's have a look at marking that now. So we'll give one mark, a tick is a mark for that term, one for that term, one for that term, and one for that term. Now you don't need the one in the front there, but you must have the negative there because it's going the opposite direction on the number line. Okay, how are you going? Did you get a few marks there? Let's go down, have a look at question two. So this is a bit of bed mast here. You must do your multiplications first. Okay, and see what we come up with. So two, and we leave out the timesing sign in algebra land. M by M by M is abbreviated to M cubed. Take 3, M by M is M squared, and you've got an N on the end. Let's have a look at this one. P by P by 5, we always put the number in front without the timesing, and P by P is P squared. Take 4, and we've got 1P and Q by Q, which is Q squared, remembering... When you multiply a number, and Q stands for a number, remember it's a pronumeral, then you can just use the square there. And the important thing is you leave out the timesing. All right, how did you go? Let's have a look at the marks now. One for getting that, 
and one for getting that. Don't forget the negative sign. And here, one for each of those. So how are you going? It does get a bit harder later on, but let's see uh, what you're doing at the moment. So here we are. Question three. And question three asks you to put in these values instead of the pronumerals or the letters here. We've got to just do careful substitution. So let's write it out. It's 2, y would be 5, take, and x is got a negative as well. So we'll just leave it like that for the minute. And 3z is 3 times neg 3. Okay, let's do it. Do the brackets first. 5 take neg 3. Reversing the direction there. 5 take and then reversing it again with the next negative. A negative times a negative is a positive if you like. That's 8. So it's 2 times positive 8 over neg 9. So that comes to 16 over 9. And you can put the negative in the top or the bottom but not both. Or in the middle of the line like I've done there. Okay. Uh, three marks for that. Let's have a look at it. Putting the numbers in place there of each symbol and then simplifying to that stage and then the final mark there. So if you get the final answer there, it's all three marks. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Again, we're replacing M by 2.8 and N by 4. Okay, P is 3 times 2.8, need a calculator for this one, plus 2.8 raised to the 4. All done on the calculator, and I believe the answer is 69.87, because you had to have two decimal places. So there's one mark for the careful replacement of each letter by its number, and one mark for two decimal places there. We must have the right number of decimal places because it says so in the problem. Read the question carefully. Okay, let's look at question four. Neg 5m times two. We've got two lots of neg 5m. You'll have neg 10, 10m. Okay, so two lots of neg 5 is neg 10. And they happen to be just not numbers, but dogs or something. M for dogs? No, M for mice. So we've got neg 10 mice or something. Okay, 3 by 2 is 6. M by M, multiplying a number by itself, is the square, M squared. And then down here, neg 3y cubed, multiplying it by itself. So there are three terms there. Let's do that carefully. Neg 3 by neg 3, positive 9. And then reversing the sign again here, neg 27. Positive times a positive, a negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative here. Okay, and then y by y by y is y cubed. So there's our uh, last answer there. All right, so let's look at a mark scheme here. So there'd be only one mark for that one. I've got the tick there. There'd be two marks for this one one for that and one for the m squared and then in this last one there's one mark for knowing you've got to multiply it all out and one mark for doing the multiplication okay how are you going let's go to question five now and just be careful here five lots of three x is 15 x plus two two x times three or three lots of two x is 6x. So we're going to have 21x. Then looking at this one, 3p by 2q is 6, 3 by 2, and p by q, they're standing for different numbers, so you can't join them together. And we just put pq, and then now negative 5 by 2 is negative 10, and p by, there's a p in there, is p squared, and you might times you by Q as well. So a little bit of a tricky one there. Just look out for that one. That little P hiding in there. Let's do this one. M squared times 4. We always put the 4 first. The number first. M squared. Take. Let's do the number. Neg 3 by 5 is neg 15. And it's an N by an N. So it's N squared. 
All right. So let's have a look at that now in terms of marks. Just be, uh, uh, what have we got? Seven marks. Uh, one for that line and one for that line too. And here we want one for that and one for that four. There'd be three for this one. What, what have we got here? Four M squared, take 15 N squared. No, really, I think we should have uh, more marks up here. Uh, what have we got? Two, four, six. We want one more. So let's have a look here and we'll give you another mark in here somewhere. Okay, one for the neg 10 and one for the P squared Q, making a total of seven there. All right, hope you're getting some marks there. Let's have a look at question six. Question six is um, cancelling or simplifying algebraic expressions. Let's have a look. Q always means the same thing in a problem, so those two would be the same. We could divide top and bottom by Q and get 3P on 2 as our answer. Then in this one, we can divide 5 into top and bottom, goes uh, 5 times into 25, and cancelling M into M cubed. Let's just check that one out, because I want you to probably write it like this, at this stage, so you can see m cubed consists of three m's multiplied together, and this one is not five, we've cancelled it down to one there. And so we've got five over m squared. All right, just remembering m cubed means m by m by m, so we've got three of them. Let's go to the last one. Maybe we'll write this one out in full. Okay, so here we go over 4y, 2's into 2 goes once, 4 goes twice, y's into itself goes once, cancelling common factor there. So what have we got? We've got x by x by x, which is x cubed, and all we've got in the bottom line is that 2 left. So it's x cubed on 2, just being careful with the replacement there of each of them. Let's mark it now. So here we'll just have, what have we got, six marks to play with. Um, well, we'll probably only have one for that one. And here we'd have one for the five being cancelled and one for writing this down um, and one for the answer. Maybe three for that one. This one, we've got one cancelling here to get the two. So that's a cancelling of two into four and one for cancelling the y, so you get x cubed. So I think that's a, a reasonable distribution of our six points there. Okay, remember, if you get the final answer and you've shown some working, you get all the marks, even if you haven't perhaps written it all out in full there. Okay, let's look at question seven. So question seven is addition of fractions, and the idea is to make the denominators or the bottom lines the same. So let's have a look at this one. 2p on 3. Now they're thirds and these are quarters, so you can't add them up as they stand. So let's multiply top and bottom of the fraction here by 4 to make 12 twelfths in the bottom line, and top and bottom of the fraction here by 3 to make 12 the lowest common denominator. So we've got to do the same to top and bottom, so 4 times 2p is 8p on 12, plus here 3p times 3 is 9p on 12. Now because they're both twelfths, you can add up the number of twelfths you've got. You've got 8p plus 9p is 17p twelfths. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now this is a little bit different because one of the bottom lines or denominators is a prime numeral, but we're also timesing, aren't we? So in timesing, multiplying fractions, it's the top lines together, the bottom lines together. So that's 2m times 18, which is 36m, over 3 by m, which is just 3m. Okay, so now we can divide top and bottom by the constant there, m, which comes to then 12. Just the number 12. So that's um, an easy one. Let's have a look at part c. Um, and... In part C, we're timesing again, so it's 5x times 6y over 3 times 10. So that comes to 
30xy over 30, 3 by 10 the bottom line. That's going to cancel into just xy. Notice you might have liked to cancel up here. 3s into 6s, 5s into 10 if you wanted to. So you could have done that as well, and uh, or waited till later. Okay, we'll come back and look at the marks for that in a minute. Let's have a look at this one. M on neg 2n squared, so it's times by m on neg 2n, which is m squared, negative times a negative is a positive on 4n squared. You can't cancel top and bottom here because m and n stand for different numbers. Let's look at the marks here. So uh, there's, I've put little ticks here already, I shouldn't have done that as I went through it. So here there is one mark for changing both of them to twelfths and one mark for adding them up. Okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, one mark for multiplying top and uh, multiplying across, so you get 36m on 3m and one mark for the cancelling. Okay, same sort of thing here. One mark for the 30xy over 30 and one mark for the dividing. Uh, one mark here for our uh, top line, m squared, and for getting positive 4m, just watch that, negative times a negative is a positive 4m squared is another mark. So there's your 8 for question 7. Okay. Question 8. Let's have a look. Times things again. So it's top lines together, 15, over bottom lines together, m squared. Okay, over here now. Let's have a look. Let's cancel back up here. Twos and twos go once. Into eight goes four times. So the top line becomes 12p over the bottom line 2p squared. And then we can cancel the twos into two goes once. Into 12 goes six. So we've got 6p over p squared, which we could write like this. So we can see another common factor. And we can cancel that. So that's 6 over P. All right, how did you go? Let's do a division one. These can be a little bit more uh, complicated looking. Let's get rid of that. Hang on, I'm trying to get rid of this thing down here. Okay. M cubed on 2 divided by, you invert and multiply. Okay, that's important to know that. Okay, then we can cancel... Four twos and a two goes once and a four goes twice. So we've got two m cubed. Let's write it out in full so we can keep, see the common factor to cancel. Okay, so we've got that and we have cancelling happening. So this comes to 2m. Okay, let's look at the marks for those then. There's just one mark here. Um, and in this one, one mark for... Uh, getting those top and bottom times together there and one mark for the cancelling of the four and one mark for cancelling of the p's so you get one p in the bottom line there okay and a similar thing here one mark for uh, showing um, division is multiplication by the reciprocal or inverting the fraction one mark for actually showing the cancellation there and one mark for the final answer there, final line. Okay, how did you do out of 46? Scroll back and add your marks up and uh, see what you uh, have there for your total. And I think the cru crucial thing here is if any of these problems pose any difficulties, uh, the idea, of course, is to now go over this again, so you make sure of the steps, and then also from the textbook, this is chapter one, find problems that are like it and uh, practice uh, doing them. I think that's extremely important. All right, well, um, I hope you have fun with that. Do some work ready for the proper test. Uh, and cheers for me for now.